Hey everyone, welcome back to Tailgate Talks. Erin Lavery, Nebraska Extension Educator here. And with silage harvest underway, I thought today would be a good time to highlight some of the recent research that's been done at the University of Nebraska, looking at feeding higher levels of corn silage and finishing diets as a way to reduce liver abscesses. When cattle are fed high grain diets with little to no roughage, it can cause that rumen or the large compartment of their stomach to become more acidic. And this can cause damage to the rumen wall and expose bacteria into the bloodstream leading to the development of liver abscesses. Because of this, it's very important to include an appropriate amount of forage in cattle diets. Cattle that experience severe cases of liver abscesses simply do not perform as well and they will have lower carcass value. But this also creates some concern from an animal well-being standpoint. The antimicrobial tylosin is often included in finishing diets to reduce the incidence of liver abscesses. But this does require veterinary approval through a veterinary feed directive or VFD. To potentially reduce the use of antibiotics and the need for a VFD, there's been some recent research done looking at feeding cattle a common finishing diet with 15% corn silage and comparing that to feeding a high silage based diet with 45% corn silage. These diets were then fed with or without tylosin. Now considering the cattle fed the high silage diet, um, that silage was replacing corn, which is higher in energy, it's no surprise that those cattle did not perform as well. Those cattle had lower average daily gains, poor feed conversions, and they required 28 more days on feed to reach a common fat endpoint. But those cattle did have heavier final body weight, which equates to more pounds sold. The use of tylosin decreased the prevalence of liver abscesses from 35% to 19% in cattle fed the traditional finishing diet. However, feeding higher levels of corn silage reduced the prevalence of liver abscesses to 12% regardless of whether tylosin was fed. The question now becomes, well, is it profitable to feed higher levels of corn silage in finishing diets? And looking at the economics, returns were greatest for those cattle fed the high silage based diet. Even though those cattle required more days on feed and they had poor feed conversions, at the end of the day, feed costs were lower and there were more pounds sold. It's also important to keep in mind that as corn price increases, it becomes more cost effective to feed corn silage at higher inclusion levels. But whether you can market your corn through your cattle or if you're marketing your cattle through maybe a natural program, feeding higher levels of corn silage may be a cost effective option, all while reducing the incidence of liver abscesses. But for more information on these studies, I'd encourage you to check out the 2021 Nebraska Beef Cattle Report. Thanks for tuning in today and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.